Welcome back to Iron Man, right here at Comic Storian, where we bring you the core parts of your favorite comic series and read them dramatically back to you. Last time, Tony and his team tried to stop Korvac, only for them to be blown up, and for Tony to have his neck broken by Korvac. So, how are they going to stop him? Well, let's dive in and find out. And be sure you have your Comic Storian notifications turned on, so you don't miss any future installments of this great story. Tony isn't giving up. His neck is broken, but he puts an arm down to try and push himself up. Hellcat has tried to come to her senses and moves into the laundromat. She puts an arm around him and helps him to his feet. And together, the two of them put Tony into a laundry cart and head out into the rainy night. Hellcat manages to flag down a taxi and gets Tony into the back seat. Drive! Now! She shouts. Tony gasps at her telling her that a hospital won't do him any good, and he needs to get to Halcyon. Meanwhile, at the warehouse, the other heroes aren't dead. Everyone looks around in shock and sees that Gargoyle has created a force field around them. The fortunate news is, you're not dead, he gasps, with the others noticing that he is severely wounded. What the heck happened? What did he do? Scarlet Spider asks as the force field drops and Gargoyle falls to the ground. Frogman quickly explains that Gargoyle shielded them with his bio energy. Scarlet Spider nods and picks up the big man. Then, by that simple math, we gotta get him help before he dies, he says. On Korvac's real ship, the demigod and his disciples are preparing to leave. Korvac heads out into the warehouse with the intent of dealing with the captured James Rhodes, who is doing his best to escape. Korvac turns as Guardsman approaches. I'm glad you're finally with us, brother, Korvac says. They both look up as Rhodey finally breaks through the pipe that he is handcuffed to and runs out of the warehouse, dodging Korvac's energy blasts. This won't do. He'll alert the others, Korvac sighs. Guardsman looks to his new leader, asking to deal with Rhodey himself. Remember me at Ascension, Guardsman says as he turns and runs after the hero. At their makeshift headquarters, Halcyon has begun to work on Tony, stabilizing his neck in the Iron Man helmet so that Tony will be able to survive until they are able to get him into emergency surgery. And Tony refuses to do so until Korvac is taken care of. The more immediate concern is the morphine drip that Halcyon installs in his armor so that Tony doesn't pass out from the pain. But Tony is an addict though, and he knows what this will do to him. Finally on his feet, Tony goes to check on Patsy, who is still hearing Korvac's voice in her mind, where he shows her images of the coming paradise that he plans to bring about in the universe. How do you feel? Tony asks, bringing Patsy back to the real world. She rubs at her head. I feel like I had two injections of olanzapine. How about you? She asks. I'm swimming in pain meds. It feels great, but that may be a problem later. He tells her honestly. Tears begin to fall from Patsy's eyes as she explains to Tony what Korvac has shown her. Tony, what if he's right? She asks. Tony leans down and puts a hand on her shoulder. He's not. Korvac can't create a perfect universe. Hell, I bet you and I could create a better universe than Korvac, he says. She smiles weakly at him. Now you're scaring me, she jokes. Outside, the other heroes are talking about getting the Avengers involved, or sending out a distress signal to some of their powerful contacts in space. They believe they aren't enough to leave Earth and stop Korvac. The door to the office opens up, revealing War Machine. Nobody here is leaving Earth. I'm getting the whole cavalry to ride against this dude. You all need to call it a day, he says. But Tony comes out, telling Rhodey that he is going after Korvac, and there's nothing that Rhodey can do to stop him. The skylight above them shatters downwards as Guardsman leaps into the room. This is your last night on Earth, Rhodes, he shouts. But Guardsman looks around at the gathering of heroes that he thought were dead. Hey, you're all still alive. All of you. Huh, how about that? Guardsman says as he straightens up. 
Tony stalks across the room and punches him hard, sending the villain flying across the room and slamming into a wall. Tony turns back to War Machine. Rhodey, you're going to be my pilot on this. Now bring me the most advanced spacecraft I own. We're going to make up for lost time, Tony says. A short time later, Tony's ship barrels through space with Halcyon at the controls. The mutant racer smiling broadly at having gone from a street racer to a spaceship pilot in a very short period of time. In the back, Rhodey and Tony are fixing up each other's armor, giving themselves tweaks to help fight against Korvac, with Tony asking his old friend to trust him in the upcoming fight. Rhodey looks up at his friend as he sits down to let Tony tune up his armor. Tony, I trust you like a brother, but that's all you're riding on right now, he says. Tony looks at him and nods. I'll take it, bud, he says quietly as he gets to work. Later, Tony goes to Patsy, asking her about the paradise that Korvac showed her. He's really in your head, isn't he? He asks. She nods, explaining that Korvac knows they are coming. That means he'll be ready, she says. But Tony asks if Patsy can make the connection a two-way street so that he can speak with Korvac. I'm not expecting to reason with him or anything, but come on, it's worth a shot, Tony tells her, letting her know that he fully trusts in her. Patsy finally nods and takes his hand. In moments, they stand in the paradise that Korvac showed her. The demigod turns in surprise to see them. Tony, nice to see you. How's the neck? Korvac asks as he smiles at them. Neither of you can hurt me like this. Your minds are scattered, exhausted, too angry, he says. But Tony shakes his head, asking Korvac to show him the utopia that he has planned. I want to know how it actually works, the nuts and bolts of universal harmony, he says. Korvac looks at him in surprise, having never thought to show Tony. I never considered you'd want me to share my vision with you. It's quite beautiful. It's perfect, he says. So Korvac holds up his hand and the landscape shifts around them. He explains that all things in his perfect universe will be the sum of the aggregate, that there will be no war, anger, or hatred, that everything will be working in perfect harmony and balance. Show me this aggregate, Tony asks. They are suddenly shown a world covered in a beautiful and perfect crystal. This is all life itself, across the universe, Korvac explains, proud of his vision. But Tony sighs and shakes his head. So, it's entirely homogenous, limited only to this singular type of existence. No freedom, no flair, no deviation, not even color. Just nothing. Things grazing on nothing, Tony says. Patsy looks at Korvac. I'm sorry, but this utopia sucks, she says. Korvac becomes angry with them, declaring that they don't have the inclination nor the mental capacity to understand his vision of harmony. Big K, this is all about you. It's a vanity project. And if you worked for me, I'd fire your ass, Tony tells him. Korvac steps forward, Prepare to fight the mental projection of Tony, but Iron Man suddenly blinks out of existence. Patsy steps forward to fight Korvac, but the demigod waves his hand and she is encased in the crystal from his vision. In the real world, Misty has walked into the room, shocked to find Patsy collapsed on the floor and Tony having disappeared. She rushes to tell Rhodey, but War Machine has his hands busy. Their ship has caught up to Korvac, and the two are now engaged. We're about to have a dogfight in outer space, and I need gunners in the belly and tail. He shouts to his makeshift crew. Evasive maneuvers, he shouts to Halcyon, who remains completely calm and begins to push the controls. Meanwhile, in a beam of light, Tony has appeared in a strange world. He looks up to find a patrol of alien creatures looking down at him. Trespasser, don't move, we're taking you in. Lesson you want us to neutralize you right here, eh? One of the patrolmen says. Tony looks at him in shock. Are you Canadian? 
he asks in surprise. Back in space, Rhodey and Halcyon are trying to dodge Korvac's attacks. But while their ship might be faster, Korvax is more maneuverable. The ship twists through the void as Scarlet Spider and Misty Knight try to fire at them with their lasers. The front controls suddenly spark as they are hit by another blast. I just lost flight control. This ship maneuvers like my grandma's damn Cadillac. Halcyon, break us hard left, Rhodey shouts. In the back, Frogman is still strapped to his chair. I was very excited to go to outer space, but now I really don't like it at all, he shouts. In the back, Gargoyle has picked up Patsy's unconscious body, holding her close and shielding them both within his bioenergy, promising to take care of her. Come back to us, Patsy. Hear my voice, friend, he says. But in her mind, Patsy hears a new voice, and she looks up to see Moondragon floating down to her. Hello, Hellcat. It's been a while, and it seems your mind has rekindled some interesting abilities, Moondragon says, remembering when Hellcat had psychic powers in the past. I'm here to make you stronger, Moondragon says, telling Hellcat that the Guardians received their message about the threat of Korvac, but that they won't be able to get there in time to help. So I'm going to enhance your mental powers, but I don't want you to be hurt, she says. Patsy thanks her, taking a moment to explain the threat of Korvac's paradise. So Moondragon takes Patsy on a journey through her mind. They begin at her high school, where Patsy is able to use her mental powers to learn the answers of a test from her teacher and mentally throw his apple against the wall. But Patsy is caught for the act and told to go to the principal's office. But the principal is Damon Hellstrom, who threatens to drag her back to hell again to be his bride. Patsy is afraid. And the next thing she knows, she sees herself in a padded room where she is rocking back and forth, babbling about hell. But Moondragon is with her the whole time, and Patsy is staring down at her body. Who is that? She asks. Your fear. Fear of your own mind, Moondragon tells her. She explains that Patsy must release her fear and accept it. Then she will become more powerful and not afraid of her own abilities. Patsy does as she is told and releases the bonds from the image of her younger self, hugging her close and smiling. Deep down, Korvac is afraid. If you are not, you can win, Moondragon tells her. Patsy suddenly awakens aboard the ship and jumps out of Gargoyle's arms. What's happening? She shouts. Frogman looks back at her. The shit has officially hit the fan! He shouts. She runs to the front of the ship and throws Halcyon out of his seat, ignoring Rhodey's shouts that they are about to die. Give me 10 seconds, then throw everything to the engines or whatever. Just make it go as fast as you can, she shouts. Patsy reaches out with her mind, showing Korvac images of the Badoon, who towers over him and promises to enslave him once again. Korvac is afraid for a moment before blasting the images with energy. Illusions all, he shouts, and the surge disables their ship for a moment, and Rhodey hits the boost, sending their ship hurtling away into the blackness of space. Now out of the battle, everyone breathes a sigh of relief. But then Hellcat looks around. Wait a minute, where the hell is Tony? She asks. And that is where we are going to leave off today's story. Where did Tony disappear to? What will happen to the crew in space? Will Korvac succeed in his plans now that Tony is out of the picture? And will Frogman be able to make it through this adventure without soiling himself? All of these questions and more will be answered in the next part of Christopher Cantwell's Iron Man. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure your notifications are turned on so that you don't miss the next part of this great story. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a like and leave a comment down below. I'm Dan, and thanks for letting me be your narrator today, and I will see you all next time.